So, um, welcome everybody back uh, from the new year. Um, so I just wanted to go over a couple things as we're getting ourselves rebooted into the new year. Um, so first thing first, just want to remind everybody that we are moving, that we've moved uh, at least uh, internally. Um, our, a lot of our um, milestones and sort of project plan back to, to GitHub. Um, and I just want to link everybody there as well within our agenda. Uh, yeah, okay, right. The second link to the to the major milestones. Um, and right now, these milestones, many of them are um, without, so so I've, I've linked to the ones that uh, are missing issues, which I think we need to create uh, some of those underneath here uh, for some of the lar larger major projects that we want to do over the year. Um, and uh, if you click on the other tab, which says nine with issues, those are here. Hey, Giovanni. Hello. Hi. I'm just uh, pasting some links here uh, into, into the chat window about uh, mm -hmm. the milestones that we have created here. So the ones uh, that have issues um, are listed uh, in, the, in the second link that I just put. And, um, and, and so there's some things under here that can be tracked. So um, seems like uh, some, it seems like folks have been adding things under here, which is awesome. Um, I just want everybody to know that we're continuing to, uh, continue to do that process as we go through the year, and that hopefully we can use this as a way to keep ourselves organized and keep tracked on what's happening um, as we go. So all right. So we have Hi, Mateo. Hi, Andre. Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm working off of agenda, which uh, pasting in the chat uh, right there. So have a look if you have yet. So anyway, um, so so just talking about the GitHub Central project. So again, its its purpose is not to, this particular repository. Its purpose is not necessarily to house code. Its purpose is to house Documentation. And, um, so um, please use that as a centralized point. Okay. Um, another update uh, since we met last that I want to talk to you about is a um, gentleman named Dr. Andrew Leeper. Um, Andrew is a C. Elegans researcher at Princeton. Was previously at Harvard and. Andrew was one of the team that was responsible for building the Colbert system. And, and if you're not familiar with the Colbert system, this is uh, an awesome uh, experimental rig setup that lets you both stimulate uh, C. elegans neurons as, they're free, as, the, uh, as the C. elegans is freely moving uh, throughout the field of view and track the worm as it's moving so that uh, you can stimulate those neurons with a laser, right? Um, no matter where the, the, the guy is moving, the clear is moving around the field. Um, his papers um, are actually really pretty relevant to what we're doing and just uh, want to share my screen here and point you to them um, in Mendeley. So the first uh, I think that's relevant is, right, so this this paper, which we which we have in Mendeley, optogenetic manipulation of neural activity and freely moving C. elegans. You can see Andrew's the first author in this, and it's it's the Samuel Lab. So these guys were at Harvard, and this figure here, um, which I've used in some presentations before, is the system. Okay, so uh, they're able to both image the C. elegans. They're able to do some um, some computer vision on it to get an outline back out, and they're able to stimulate different pieces and parts of it. Um, now, I've known about this system for quite a while, so this isn't news, but what's news is that somebody who is working on it, um, I had, I've now had multiple conversations with, and is excited to help us, um, and vice versa. Um, he, he also becomes somebody who, um, you know, is a, a, a person who the hypotheses that we generate here 
could uh, assist. So, um, so it's pretty exciting uh, to be able to be talking to him. So he's moved now from Harvard to Princeton, where he has a five-year appointment to carry on this kind of work. Um, he's also responsible for uh, a piece of this paper, which we which we just pointed to recently, called "Proprioceptive Coupling Within Motor Neurons Drives C. Elegans Drives C. Elegans Forward Locomotion." And this paper is the one. Um, that came out recently, which suggested that some of the C. elegans motor neurons uh, are themselves responsible for detecting the state of uh, flex of the uh, of the C. elegans. So this is uh, using that system that uh, we just showed to do a bunch of experiments to work out uh, the motor the motor circuit. And uh, one of the ways that they're doing that, uh, I want to point out really quickly here. Um, are in these figures over here. So what they are doing is that they've actually trapped the worm in a, a microfluidics chamber, and they're stimulating its neurons over time, and they're watching the way that it flexes. And they've got different mutants that will show different flexing based on how they're stimulated. So what they're doing is they're working out the sequence of events that happen inside the motor circuit um, in time, and they can do really nice things where they can get in there and so let's say that in order to cause a bend um, you have to, the, the C. elegans has to uh, stimulate neuron A, the neuron B, the neuron C, right, and they know that that's a very stereotype pattern. Well they can get in there and they can suppress neuron B just before it's about to go on and they can see what the effect is on whether the, whether the, uh, whether the C. elegans can bend or, or not. So why is this why is this relevant? Um, it's because uh, we're now talking with somebody who uh, can potentially give us some data sets that are relevant to the motor circuit, that are relevant to uh, the motor neurons that feed into the muscle cell um, uh, specifically. Um, he's also helping us to connect to other people who are um, who have data sets. Essentially, these movies of the neurons activated. I should also say that they're that in addition to seeing this uh, flex state of the body, they also are doing calcium imaging of the activity of the neurons themselves. And so in a paper that he's working up and, and will be publishing in the next couple months, in addition to stimulating the neurons and capturing the state of the bend of the worm, they're also looking at the state of activity of the neurons all in the same system. So when we're talking about Turing tests for the simulation, it's very exciting because You've got, you're going to have primary data that's both showing how the worm is moving and crawling and how its cells are activated to cause that crawling. So bottom line, Andrew is, um, is an awesome resource and um, he's, he's very excited about what we're doing, very supportive of the project, wanted to know a lot more about how it's all going. Um, I, I look forward to having continued conversations with him during um, you know, the first part of this year. And again, he's got a five-year appointment at Princeton and, you know, we'll be publishing papers throughout. So um, uh, it's exciting to talk about that with him. I guess the last piece is also is that the focus of his study is 20 specific neurons uh, in the motor system. Um, some of them are kind of more interneurons, but a few of them are motor neurons uh, specifically. And he's looking a lot at that particular circuit and trying to work out the series of events that happen there. So it also might be nice as we move out of the muscle cell and move into more, more of the motor circuit for us to overlap with those neurons as we'll continually be collecting data about those. So questions about that? Awesome. Yeah. No, it's great that you're making contact with these people. Um, I don't know if Matteo mentioned last time about uh, we had a brief discussion with uh, somebody who's just started at um, UCL uh, recently. Uh, her name was uh, Aranza Barrios. Aranza Barrios, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she has formerly been in Emmons lab, uh, where um, uh, Steve Cook, Cook uh, was also, and one of the persons person she mentioned to us, uh, who is very good in the field that we should make contact with, was Arinthan, Aravinthan Samuel, Samuel who seems right. to be the um, lab head who's, yes, who's on those papers as well. So 
It's a small community. So. Yeah, that's terrific. Okay, very good. So, um, and if um, and if that person at UCL as well is interested in sharing data or whatnot, uh, that could be. Excellent. So, I think the the upshot of this for the short term is this sort of database of um, of uh, movies and primary data. Um, what's interesting is that the biologists in the field aren't quite as interested in the raw data as we are. So even though they're kind of willing to share, they don't tend to like make it really obvious where these movies are all located. They're actually happier looking at the graphs that come out in the publications to get the summary of it. But for our purposes, getting the raw traces and the time courses at the highest resolution possible is, is actually really important. So what I'm, I'm sort of talking about and starting to try and see if we can get together is to provide a service back to the biologists where we can basically, I mean, at first it can just be a web page, right, that just has a list of, of all these um, videos and, and, and raw data for, that are recordings of elegant videos basically moving around. Um, but uh, if we do it in a way where we sort of categorize it and, you know, tag it so that it's easily searchable, um, we could, we could, it could be another way in which experimentalists come to us and, and get some additional value back, e even outside of the simulation, uh, for a while. So, anyway, so that's all good stuff, and, um, and I'm excited to see where that, that goes in the future. Um, all right, so moving on. So publication meeting coming up. Uh, I think you all got the uh, heads up from Balash that uh, we're going to meet again to talk about the prospectus paper on the 14th. Um, I've seen quite a bit of activity over the break. I've put in some edits myself. Um, I threw a couple diagrams in there. We'll see if they survive uh, the editing. Um, but um, but uh, I think uh, you know it's starting to come together. Mike, I saw some edits from you this morning. So obviously, we're continuing to, to do that. But let's try and, and so if, if you haven't touched this yet, or if you're thinking about getting in there, um, Still open for editing. Everybody has access uh, to it. It's called Virtual C Elegans. If you wanna, if you wanna search for it, maybe I should just, uh, maybe I should just go ahead and post the link again here while we're talking. <coughs> so it's there. Steven? Yes. Um, has Balash now completely moved all work on the document into Google Docs? Uh, the last time there was some question of him having a separate version. Uh, I can't. I haven't spoke to him uh, since the last time, so maybe worth um, shooting an email on Open One Discuss. But um, I've seen quite a bit of new text in there from him, so I think there's there's some stuff. Um, I just I'm not. I wouldn't have to be 100 percent sure he's finished. So uh, yeah. Anyway, so feel free to, to get in on that. And again, the meeting. You're also everyone's also welcome to attend. Again, if you. Uh, thinking about you know getting in on that, and you haven't been part of it in the past, you're still welcome. So don't don't hesitate to to jump in. Uh, let's see. So the 14th. I'm just checking my calendar. Yeah. So it's on it's on the open warm calendar, um, and and this stuff is also attached to it. So uh, if it, if you need an extra invite to that or you need another invite, um, just ask me. Okay, moving right along. Right, so then website upgrade. So we're looking to, to, to do that. I think maybe I'll let Matteo talk about that um, as well. Um, uh, we wanna, want to spiff up the websites. Um, we are still looking at potentially being featured by, uh, by Wired Magazine um, in February or end of February, March. Um, so we'd like to kind of put that up again. Uh, so we're still working on that that piece. And um, I think you guys probably saw that I uh, put out the release notes finally from release three uh, yesterday. Uh, I needed to get that out the door. Um, so that's gone out. I also uh, in that email I had a new sign up for volunteer contributors, which I was trying to make a little bit more friendly to non experts. Um, so some of the questions there were kind of more suggestive of folks who might come in and help write blog posts or that kind of thing. So I've already had one response, um, at least. I haven't checked the email yet this morning. So, um, so we'll see. Uh, folks in the new year, uh, you know, want to jump on and help. Um, I'll uh, keep you posted on, on how that goes. We did have another volunteer, actually. That's right. I, I should mention we had another volunteer named Gaston, 
Gentile from Buenos Aires, Argentina, um, who volunteered to translate all of our documentation into Spanish uh, because he himself is nice. the main Spanish speaker, and um, and he came to the site and he realized that it's hard for him to kind of get into the project without um, without knowing uh, without having a translation. So I mentioned to him that we we're still in the process of you know updating the website and that all the text isn't finished. But I got him started on a Google Doc um, to translate some pieces that we already have. So um, as we're thinking about website upgrade, let's think about having maybe a you know button uh, where you can switch between English and Spanish um, so that um, so the folks uh, coming in from the Spanish language can understand what's going on with the project. Um, and I'll keep you posted on his. He's still doing a first iteration on on uh, this on the Spanish stuff. So hey, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, if he does that, it would be great if he could flag issues where stuff isn't clear. Yeah, yeah. So I'm also using it as an excuse to look at the documentation again from fresh eyes, which I think we constantly need to do, and I'm constantly trying to do in little bits and pieces of uh, making things more clear. Um, but uh, in particular, things like intro paragraphs, I think, uh, is one place where uh, we can really use some, uh, some some spiffing up I'm noticing for myself. Like we say, like, these are the components of the project, but we don't really have an intro paragraph that explains why those are the comp components of the project. So. Um, Anyway, I, I think we should cover that more when we're talking about website. But, um, but yeah, so those are some those are some updates uh, on that. Okay, so um, I'll be quiet now and round robin. Um, the topics I have here are just cut and pasted from last time, so I'll be using that to take minutes. But uh, if that uh, at least uh, prompts you in your memory what we were talking about last time, then great. Um, so. Looks like Mike is first on the list. By the way, um, you may, people may, may have gotten nothing done in the last several weeks because of break, which is totally fine. But if you have done something or you just want to talk about the directions you're going to be moving in, um, that's all great. So um, but no, no problem if, uh, if you're like, yeah, I kind of just need some turkey. Uh, Mike. Um, yeah, I have nothing to do so. Okay. I'm still I'm still working on um, <coughs> making the C model, uh, making the model of the experiment itself more accurate. Uh, That's what I'm doing. Oh, you. Uh, Mike, I can hear you, but you're really quiet. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. <coughs> so what I'm working on at the moment is actually getting the simulation itself on from the. Um, of the muscle cell closer to the experimental closer to the experimental simulations of the protocol to match the experimental protocol rather than parameter theory. But nothing nothing no no progress so far before. Okay. Yep. And you are editing up the um, the paper, obviously. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Very cool. Um so you and I will have a chance to meet I think next week uh one on one talk more about that stuff too. But Okay. That's right. Very good. Mateo, nice. do you want a minute to uh, finish up your editing there? Uh, no, I'm done. Okay, go for it. Okay, uh, so but I haven't done much because I was on holiday for two okay. weeks, I think, something like that. So uh, I part of the things I've done is I, um, on GitHub, I Changed a little bit some of the milestones to reflect more the structure uh, we're having now with the simulation engine. I think I added one milestone to have a separation between uh, the work that Andre is doing uh, on the fluid mechanics on the PCI-SPH uh, solver in terms, but on the C++ side, and I created another milestone to track uh, how we port that to the simulation engine. Uh, so, and I started adding some stories there, uh, which are uh, everything is on GitHub. On the website, uh, I uh, spent some time with Joe uh, working on the different sections. And I, I don't know if you can open it. I think you can because I can see some people in. Uh, so, there's a document with the new section that you are thinking to put in the new website. It's basically uh, just derived from the old section that we had uh, with some addition and some cuts based on 
what we learned and what we think needs to be uh, exposed more and what doesn't need as much exposure as it had in the in the current website. Uh, so obviously feedback is welcome and uh, we'll be putting some content there. Um, also in terms of text, which is not there yet. Uh, there will be things like the text in the about page that we probably need to improve and things like that. Uh, so that uh, basically we need to answer uh, all the questions to the visitor which comes to the website and doesn't know anything about it uh, and we need to appeal to all the different kind of visitors that can come to the website. So whether it's someone who's Knacker, biologist, uh, just a normal uh, curious citizen, all these kind of people don't have to be scared, they all need to find what interests them and we need to be to do a better job than what we did so far in explaining what is that we're doing. So that is part of the reason, as you were saying, Stephen, also uh, because of the wired coverage that we'll have in March, uh, we don't want to miss the chance of looking good. Okay. So um, that is, uh, everyone feel free to add comments to the document uh, or questions or whatever because I, I will keep that updated as we, as we go along. Uh, the other thing that uh, was going uh, on a little bit since the last meeting was the uh, renaming of the simulation engine as suggested from many of you the name a simulation engine which was never meant to be a name in itself uh, wasn't uh, going to last for long so there was a bit of a poll on a Google Docker uh, many people uh, expressed some preferences the one that got most votes uh, was Geppetto for those that do not know Geppetto is the, um, one of the characters in the fairy tale from uh, the Italian writer Collodi and it's basically the carpenter which makes Pinocchio out of wood. So the name wants to kind of reflect the fact that uh, it, it, it was Giovanni that proposed the name, I liked it and uh, also Oreg, Stephen and Mike I think liked it and uh, it, it's basically it's a parallel in between the carpenter that create something that is somehow alive at the end uh, with a simulation engine which is used to put together different bits and pieces that will eventually be used to create something that is uh, a good simulation, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and and I was, sorry? It means we're all carpenters. Yes. <laughs> And uh, I was starting uh, to work a little bit on the on the logo that is just a proposal and we'll probably work on it a bit more, but just to show you something. I think that's it from me. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so Giovanni, how are we doing? We're doing good. Um, so I'm just looking up how Geppetto died. <laughs> I don't know that. I, <laughs> I want to make sure that we don't do the same. <laughs> and uh, so I seem to remember. I seem to remember. Yes, that it died inside a whale or something. I just don't. It was escaping the whale. Uh, you know, it ended up I don't inside the whale, but I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyway, we can look it up. Uh, so, updates from me. I'm still working on uh, porting the PCI SPH stuff. I did not spend a lot of time during the holidays. Uh, I did spend some time. So it's progressing. There's no commits because, I mean, this kind of porting work, I cannot just commit half of it. So I'm committing locally and uh, I'm getting closer and closer. I'm hoping this week to do most of the progress, hopefully closing it by midweek next week. And then we can actually try <laughs> if it works or not, if I messed up or not. Um, so that's pretty much 
most of the stuff that I'm doing, uh, other than the stuff that Matteo said. One thing that I'd like to say about the name for the simulation engine is that if anyone has any strong uh, feelings against it, please don't hold them back, just because we don't want to pick it uh, if there are reasons not to. Uh, so I, I would invite uh, debate if anyone doesn't like it and it was just the one with the most votes. Yeah, but I think there's also uh, a strong thing to be said. The people who are building it can also uh, have a choice of mania. So it's good <laughs> to ask people that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, it does reflect the Italian heritage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, actually, like, uh, yeah, it's quite of an international um, tale from that point of view. So. I'm I'm kind of trusting that most people will know what it is that it's been talked about when you say yeah. that. Uh, and also to try to, uh, because uh, Mike had some concerns uh, uh, generically over names that uh, wouldn't uh, reflect exactly what it means, which uh, are, uh, like, I don't want to start a debate in any way on this, but if you've seen in the logo, Mike, I'm trying to put something that tells explicitly what it is, okay? Like Instead that. of trying to come up with acronyms that usually make very bad names that you cannot remember, it's like the name is Geppetto, but it always comes with uh, System Biology Open Simulation Platform, which is just a short description for what we're doing. I really like that. Cool. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much. That's pretty much everything from me. I'm sure I wanted to say something else. Um, oh, I I read the uh, Bala, Bala's paper today. Mm. It's looking good. Um, I was happy and glad to see that all my most of the feedback we provided in the previous version was integrated. So it's looking good. And, um, really happy about that, just because I think it will be great in terms of exposure for the project itself. I think the concept is such such a basic uh, idea of the Turing test. I, I really think it, it would be a great uh, thing for the project in general if we were to actually do it in this iteration. That would be awesome. Uh, that's pretty much everything. I'm Basically, gonna keep working on the SPH, uh, SPH uh, porting, and uh, I I did did do some work on the milestones as well. So after the SPH, uh, I'm gonna jump onto one of those other things that I have on my list. Um, still need like to define exactly what's gonna be next because this SPH was a big a, a big chunk. Um, so that's pretty much everything for me. So it looks like Tim is next. Tim, you have some stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. So I um, I didn't get, like everybody else over the holiday, I didn't get a lot done as far as data um, gathering. But I did, I do appreciate the book that you sent me, uh, Stephen, and I have been reading it. And I it indicated to you before, this is uh, about the semantic representation of data. And um, I mentioned to you before, I actually created a system, and it, it was great reading the book, or starting to read the book, because it brought back a lot of uh, uh, unpleasant memories, maybe. <laughs> because I remember what I had to go through to figure it out in an application point of view. So the, the cool thing is, is that this, this book has really given me a lot of structure to what I had played with uh, earlier. But basically, what it, what it is is that um, you know you could take a neuron, for instance, and you can map uh, that neuron to all the different pieces and parts that make up that neuron, like the neural peptides, uh, the the uh, this synaptic uh, information, things like that, and then um, you can you can reuse that information over and over again per by by each neuron. So you're basically writing the data once instead of writing it. You know, uh, 302 times, and then you're linking all the data. Um, you're linking like a neuron to all the data that is, represents that neuron. 
So there might be shared information. So rather than again rewriting it, you know, 302 times, we write it once and then link those those neurons that that uh, that that data represents. So the issue actually I'm, I'm coming up against, which is kind of interesting, and in business we call it a white space report. I don't know if everybody's familiar with that or not. But it's the missing information, and this is kind of where we started going with this data representation, was how do we extrapolate what we don't know. And that's, that's the part that I'm working on, um, trying to figure out how we can represent that in a, in a clean and, and concise way that, that shows where the pieces and parts that we need to gather um, and, and, and be able to start filling in that information. Cool. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, yeah, this book is uh, Semantic Web Technologies by O'Reilly. Um, I came across it and sent it over to, to Tim because it's relevant to uh, the organization of data um, problem. And uh, some of the approaches there are familiar from my past work. Um, and we've been thinking about how to apply them here um, to kind of consolidate all the data. So, um, so very cool. Good. Um, other stuff, Tim? Um, well, I, I did some uh, external uh, work uh, outside of the scope of, of the simulation itself. I don't know if you want me to talk about that or not. Sure. Okay, well, a long, long time ago I, I, I created a, a system that used an individual program to represent a neuron. And I was talking with a buddy of mine um, a couple weeks ago, who's one of the better developers I've ever known, and um, the problem I always ran into was the the issue of not having enough. Uh, you, you couldn't create enough processes on a single processor to really make the system work. I, I can show you if it's okay with you, um, Stephen, the, uh, the PowerPoint that I created. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? Sh are you sharing your screen? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find it. There you go. Okay, so there's a little bit of history here. Um, for the you know for 20 plus years, I've been thinking about this. Um, and then, like I said, each iteration that I, I created, and I, I created it on mainframes, on PCs, on all kinds of different processing uh, systems, uh, there was always machine limitations that I ran up against, which made things very difficult to, to expand. So, and the, and the other really issue I think is important that I never really had a connectome to work with. So, what the open worm has given me that you know that that information, and it um, I find it very important because obviously I can create my own neural network, but you know it's it, it's hard to say is it working or not working because you really don't have a beginning and end; you're just kind of guessing at what what it does. And like I said, I was talking to a colleague the other day, and then I realized, wait a minute, I, I'm in 64-bit system now, running Windows 7. I bet a lot of those limitations that I used to have in the old 32-bit system, or even before that, um, are gone now. And I, so I did a quick test, and voila, I found out, yeah, I can, I can run a lot of different processes on a single processor. So basically, the way the system works, and I'll go through this very quickly, is a, the sensory neuron, which you guys have seen, and some of the other stuff that I've done, each, each neuron is, a, is represented by an individual uh, process, an individual application or, or program. And then, of course, there's the motor output. And to have the applications talk to each other, uh, I use UDP, which is User Data Grant Protocol. This is different than TCP in the sense that UDP, UDP is asynchronous. So you send something, and that's what most of your video, in fact, what we're working on, what we're using right now as far as video is probably UDP. So. Um, it allows you to send something to another process or another application without waiting for a response. It just sends the data to it and hope that it gets there and everything like that. 
So you guys have seen this before. So I modified it a bit um, to to take all the sensory neurons, um, and I created what the red boxes of um, a UDP expression of that that information, that weighted information by by each one of those sensory neurons. Hmm. Interesting. So then. This is a representative of the program itself that it represents an individual neuron. In this case, we have we, we represent each program by a specific port or socket uh, number. Uh, I, I tell you which neuron it is. It, if it, when it receives data, it'll tell you where the IP that it's coming from. In this case, it's my local desktop. What the what what it got, you know, a one or a two or whatever. And then where I'm, I'm displaying in the box below what this neuron links to, and that's by the name, the port number, which I make up, obviously, and, and the weighted value according to the data that we have. So you're turning, uh, you're turning neurons into ports. Um, yeah, to individual applications defined by a specific port. OK. Like, uh, as you well know, port 80 is, is your, your, your web. Or, yeah. Uh, port uh, 25 is your SMTP for sending email. Port 110 is your receiving pop, your pop port for receiving email, things like that. Yep. And then the output comes in this matrix that I, you guys have seen before um, that I created. That th this each one of these these items in this matrix, you know, this is these are the muscles, DL, BL, BR, um, DR, and then when the data is all the data hits this application, and I use port 999 for this, um, and it, it displays which muscle gets activated, and I created this little this little worm representation that you guys have seen before that kind of wiggles around um, just just for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> some of the insights that I got out of this. Um, you know the, the basic neuron app does does work, um, and, and the network is self perpetuating. Uh, now it was interesting. I ran it. I went ahead and just let it run because I could see the individual neurons, you know, continually to run. I could see because you can see when they get when they, when they get input that they continue to increment the the weighted value. So it continues to run and run. And I just let it run overnight. I started in the afternoon. I let it run overnight to the next day, and it was still working. It was still running. And, and I think the important part of that is in our simulation, we need to understand, I mean, the worm is a, is, a, is a living thing, so its neurons never stop. It's not like you push a button, activate a neuron, and then look back and see what's going on. What, what's, what this really represents is the fact, and I think it's a very important fact for us to consider in our work and our efforts, is that... Um, this, this, these neurons are activating each other over and over and over again continuously. So it's, 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 it's not that we can just, you know, we can segregate a pathway if we design the system to do that, similar to the research that you were just talking about uh, with Andrew and what he's doing. But, you know, when you activate this system, you know, it's going to be this, this, you know, 302 neurons or some subset of that just continuously running and working. And doing all kinds of different things, so you got to kind of anticipate some of those things. And of course, the sensory um, information is still coming in, regardless. I mean, there's muscle um, sensory information that's happening, motor, motor sensory information, and things like that, continuously happening. So it's continuously activating uh, those neurons. So some of the challenges I ran, I'm running into, of course, is that even though I have a 64 pit uh, system. Um, it 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 pretty much takes over that system when I run everything, the 302 neurons and all the other stuff going on. I did set up the data and stuff to work off of multiple IPs, and obviously, you know, the best way to do this would be to do something like, you know, each each neuron or each application would run on a different system. So the next step is to create some more of a distributed type environment to play with. <clears throat> Uh, be fun to plug this into, you know, whatever we create as far as a virtual worm. And of course, um, the the neuron app that I created is pretty pretty vanilla in the sense that it gets weights, it, it hits a certain threshold, and it, it fires its 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 apps on or its weights out to the other the other neurons. 
So it's not taking into consideration things like neuropeptides and, and a lot of the other you know, activity that we know goes on in a neuron. That's it. Cool. Very nice. So you produce code. Uh, it takes the connectome. Uh, you've got a s simple models of neurons where things go on and off and can signal each other. And, uh, and it's mapped onto UDP which uh, is very cool, so it captures the asynchronous aspect, and you have, um, you have a little visualization of what the output does. And, uh, and from doing that, you kind of get a feel for um, the complexity of activity in a, in a nervous system like this, uh, because things don't quiet down. Uh, things actually continue to, to stimulate each other. And of course, balances between excitatory neurons and inhibitory neurons sometimes also shape that flow um, of activity, so that might be an interesting thing as well to. Uh, to that, think that is that is, I do have that built in. I do have the uh, inhibitory aspects built in. Yeah. Very cool. And and that and that kind of that kind of creates things to a steady state, I think, uh, eventually. But you know, things like the threshold and stuff. I I, I just picked a number, and you know, right, those things need to be fine tuned, and it probably needs to be fine tuned by the specific neuron too. Very cool. So uh, let me ask this: What do you think? Uh, what do you want to do next with this? Uh, actually, I was telling you, I, I um, yesterday was announced um, a pretty cool product coming out from Lego, of all places, the EV3 uh, robotics system uh, that they've created. And I've been waiting for for quite some time. I actually have uh, a Mindstorms um, robotic set um, at home now that I. I'm trying to plug this into just to see what it would do. In other words, we'd have, you know, it has, it has sensors, it has motors, and just want to play around and see what it does to create kind of a framework. Um, but, but the problem is, and, and the issue that we run, we're working on very hard, um, is that we need a true simulation of a worm, right? I mean, we need, we need a physical virtual worm to really plug these things into. So we can create connectomes and, and, and neurons and do all these different ways of creating the, the worm's brain, so to speak. Uh, but until we have an actual physical model of something we can plug it into, it's kind of like, you know, we're just, we're just playing in the ether. Yeah. So that's actually also pretty interesting to think about starting to use some of these uh, set, these kits. Because I know that uh, Jordan Boyle built a physical... Uh, a physical right. robot uh, yeah. from his uh, from his work. So um, I'm just pasting in the chat window there the the Lego kit that you're talking about, which uh, looks like it can be interfaced with um, with uh, iPads and iPhones, and uh, seems like it has some pretty yeah. sophisticated programming controllers that are associated with it, um, and uh, and some pretty interesting sensors associated with it too. So I mean, obviously there there's Many different paths through this, and you know we're working at, at different levels, and you know we're um, wanting to build this as a physical thing in, in silico. But the path that you're taking as well is um, is also really exciting, especially because I think it's it's more accessible to uh, to folks who are uh, you know not uh, you know not coming from the the heart of academia. Uh, I think it's more accessible to folks um, who want to get a quick you know. Okay, so what is a connectome? Okay, so show me what does a connectome do, even if it's just operating in a very, you know, w without all the biology in there. Okay, so there's activity patterns, and uh, so I think that's great. I think it's awesome, and I think that again, you're finding a way to reuse this data set of the connectome, which um, we've we've exposed uh, through this project, and um, you know, which um, is hard to get to or to understand where to find uh, before you start. So. So I think that's awesome. Um, if uh, if you do ever want to share the code for, uh, oh, I will, I will, yeah. You, we can. Uh, it's easy to put up and on, onto the GitHub repo, and I think it would be an awesome thing for folks to be able to play with and point point uh, you know point it at people. I would include it in, in the in the release notes, for example, um, but uh, but didn't have anything to point to. So yeah. <laughs> Um, definitely, I'll, I'll definitely want to get that together. Of course, of course, I want to document it. So, <laughs> right, right. That's the. That's what language is it written in? Mike, go ahead. I'm sorry, I can't hear. What language is it written in? 
I'm sorry, my good evening. What you said? My, uh, I said, what language is it written on? Yeah, well, that, you can laugh because it's in BB. It's in BB. Okay. 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 And so all the uh, it's in it's in it's it's in BB non net. The reason it's in BB non net and not something like C sharp, yeah, yeah, Mateo, thank you, um, is because the original application that I wrote was in BB long before C sharp and some of these other things exist. I mean, basically, either at C plus plus or VB. And at the time, I was playing with some VB stuff, so I had written the original system in VB. So when I realized that, you know. Oh wait a minute! I can now run 302 processes. But by the way, before that, is about it was maxed out about 250 on an individual processor. So on a 16-bit PC, but um, or a 32-bit PC. So um, so the natural progression was I thought well since I already got the code in VB I'll just you know port that over to VB.net. So that's why it's written in VB.net. I'm thinking about converting it over to C sharp as part of running with it. Very cool. Okay. Or maybe, or maybe Python. Actually, the way I got talked to my buddy on this discussion, he had he had said uh, over the holiday he was playing with an application language called Node.js. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that or not. Yep. Node.js. Yep. And he said it was like super super fast, and he was recommending that I, I, uh, I, I check it out. I think it's this. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe he did say Node.js. Oh. I thought he said Node.js. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's that's what okay. I heard when he said it. Yeah, okay, maybe, yeah. All right, okay, so maybe that's why I couldn't find any information. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so I was like, I was going to explore some of those as well and see what, uh, see how it could be written up a little bit better and more in tune with uh, some of the stuff that we're doing. Cool. Very cool, Tim. Awesome. Well, as usual, let, let me know how I can help and... Um, with any of this, and as you're going to next steps and next directions, let me know as well. Um, but I well, as I told you yesterday, I did write. I did write to Lego because the EV, EV3 is not coming out. They said until probably the fall or late summer. Okay. Yeah. So I asked them, you know, could we become an early adopter? And I did point them to the Open Warm project and said, well, this okay. is the kind of thing we're doing. So um, you know, we may contact you or contact one somebody else. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Great. All right, let's keep moving here. Um, that was very cool. Um, uh, let's see. So I don't think Alex has been able to join us. Uh, so ne next is uh, Pork. Um, uh, not very much to report, I'm afraid. Uh, quiet break over Christmas. So um, mainly been working on some open source brain activities, uh, so I haven't gotten around to doing very much with uh, Open Worm. Um, the little bit that we have been doing, uh, Matteo has been working on the uh, 3D visualizer for um, the open source brain, which show, can show the uh, C. elegans connectome also. And one thing that, a um, little bit of uh, my Christmas present, uh, which shows some application of this, is a nice Google tab, which uh, can, due to open standards, etc., show the uh, C. elegans uh, connectome on a tablet, which is quite nice, running in the browser. So that would be quite nice for visualizing any um, network in NeuroML, which is running on open source brain. So that would be quite nice for visualizing the um, uh, model when it is feeding through, and that's all based on the. Uh, uh, it's all quite nicely linked in with Geppetto and everything else, so um, it's all going in the nice, nice in the right, nicely in the right direction. So, awesome. Um, when do you, do you guys have a release date for that visualizer? Um, first of February in theory. Earlier than that, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we have to get in a new application for the um, open source brain funding by then, and we want to have that on the uh, website. So, okay, okay, we'll be pushing for that. I mean, it's mostly there, but there are various things to clean up and um, polish. So, 
my laptop stolen didn't help. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Stephen, was that uh, actually the visualizer is now uh, deployed on a, an Amazon instance. So uh, I remember some of you were asking, when can we play with it? Now, this is not officially released, but uh, I would like even some feedback from you to just by playing with it. Uh, and uh, as soon as possible, we'll try to address all the comments we get. But I just pasted it there in the chat the link. So in your own time, just go play with it. By default, now it's loading the um, open worm connector. Obviously, this will be deployed within open source brain, so you will be looking at whatever project you are browsing. So if you're in a Parkinji cell, you will be visualizing the Parkinji cell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just feel free to check it out and pass any comments or feedback that you might have. Very cool. All right. Um, how's NeuroML version two going? Or um, again, we're planning a beta release for the first of February, but um, okay. uh, yeah, there's there's various things, um, uh, various parts to that. Uh, there's the um, uh, various Java, Java libraries. There's some Python stuff. Uh, there's the specification itself, and uh, hopefully at that point we can have most things on the same level, on the same version, and then have a few mails around saying that it's a beta release um, and hopefully get a bit more interest, but um, we're trying to aim for that point where we can uh, release a few things together. Okay, awesome. That so uh, sounds like it's going to be an exciting February. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. sure. All right, awesome. All right, so, and we turn to Siberia. Andre, <laughs> how are you doing, sir? Oh, fine. Thanks. Um, oh, you've got a Christmas tree up behind you. That's awesome. <laughs> I just noticed. <laughs> and the lights are blinking. That's fantastic. OK. Uh, <laughs> when do you take them down in Siberia, <laughs> the trees? July. Um, <laughs> uh, what's the question? Where are we, uh, we can uh, get when, them. When, sorry? Never? <laughs> when do you take the trees down? Down? Uh, you mean uh, remove them? Yes. After, uh, well, um, at it stays in the... Um, Oh, how to say this? Um, the reservoir are filled with uh, water, uh, and um, it drinks water about uh, more than a liter uh, each day. So if I um, uh, refill it with uh, new water, um, it um, keeps fresh uh, until it drinks water and it's alive. <laughs> oh, so, okay. That's wonderful. Uh, um, the Christmas yeah. decoration. Do you get yeah. rid of those at some stage, or? Well, very nice. Well, it will um, become. Well, uh, uh, until it's alive and it looks pretty, it can live here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Remember in Alaska, when we, had, when we had cut trees, we we would leave them up probably till February, just <laughs> because we could. So we like having trees inside. Um, awesome. Anyway, so what's what's going on with the project, Andre? Uh, at uh, this uh, period of time, every year at the um, end of uh, December. Um, I always uh, need to um, make scientific uh, reports um, in the institute, um, which um, take into account all the things done uh, within uh, the complete year. So it takes uh, some time. And um, now it's almost uh, finished, completed. and. Um, 
now I can finally return back to our uh, project. Uh, I am full of uh, plans. Um, so finally we need to make uh, something really uh, useful and functional from our uh, basic uh, SPH. No, because liquid and elastic matter is very nice, but we need a worm. <laughs> finally, um, a lot of uh, plans and uh, even slides of how to do it. Mm, some schemas were prepared already, and we just need to start and um, keep going with this. <sighs> So I think that step by step uh, something new uh, will appear at every new meeting. Um, right now I feel enthusiastic uh, about um, new uh, year results. So I plan and I expect much from a uh, new year's vision. Very cool. Um, Question. Um, I remember we had the challenge of, of trying to make uh, bounding triangles uh, to keep the particles from switching from the liquid and, and bursting through the, um, the uh, elastic material. Um, is, that, is that what you're coming back to working on now? Oh, maybe Sergey will tell a few words uh, because uh, we. We're discussing it, um, and um, changes which are necessary to the uh, inner uh, data structures within the uh, simulator, which we need to introduce um, to allow um, these structures. Right now, uh, I'm interested to uh, tell about technical uh, details. Maybe, maybe if Sergey is uh, ready, we can add something. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, we had a discussion about two, two weeks ago, maybe. Cool. So it's okay. possible, but it needs uh, some, um, some additional uh, work. Uh, so not only programming. Uh, Directly, what is um, what it looks like, but some additional um, inner stuff. But it's in nearest plans, okay. Very good. So, uh, so Sergey, then, um, happy New Year, sir. Uh, Last task which I work was a problem of deterministic of algorithms PCI SPH. And uh, uh, there are no many success, but I, uh, I make some uh, changes uh, in algorithms and integration and in uh, efficient. So this change set I put to the GitHub and everybody who wants to get last version, you can get it. Okay. Uh, also, I still work on uh, problem of deterministic and uh, uh, that that's last task. No more uh, updates. Cool. So, which do you, do you, did you push recently? No, before New Year. Uh, okay. Thirty de December, maybe. Okay. Yes. What in what uh, in what repo? Uh, okay. Uh, Integrated version, I think. Uh, mm. OK. 
Okay, yeah, because I'm not sure I'm seeing I'm not seeing that, but maybe I'm in the wrong branch integrated version. Ah, okay. Commits. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Okay. So there. So the December eleventh commit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's something great. And then this um, does so, but we still have to address this this boundary this boundary issue. Is that still uh, something you're working on? Boundary issue? No. Uh, I finished this task. Uh, I find some bugs, but uh, I I think I fix it. And uh, now, current version is without bugs. Uh, maybe I didn't put these changes. <laughs> oh. Okay. I was. Okay. I I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. We'll look into it. And you you and I are going to chat here after this meeting too, so we can we can also talk a little bit more. About it, okay. So. Okay, very cool. Well, um, so very good, everyone. Uh, I think uh, I don't think we left anybody out looking around. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to be looking to um, make sure that I have a sense of where folks are in terms of the different uh, issues that we've laid out and, and where folks are 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 going, um, just so that we can kind of keep track. Um, but um, Again, if you've, I, I hope that you had a chance to read over the release notes that we put out. Um, we did a lot in the last release. Uh, we're currently in a new release that I think um, we're aiming to end, what, in June? So um, I, I'm looking forward to a lot of exciting things happening in this next period as well. Um, not only getting out a new paper, but uh, also uh, getting uh, you know, this visualization system uh, that we have with the SPH working, uh, the stuff that Giovanni's doing, um, feeding in the optimization work into uh, into the engine, uh, getting um, getting a worm body made out of the physics uh, system that we've worked so hard on, um, and uh, continuing to iterate the connectome uh, with additional information, and hopefully starting to be able to process some of these movies that are coming from experimental labs. Uh, not to mention the website, you know, uh, redo and, uh, and some of these other exciting uh, side projects and side avenues that we have to go to. So, so right, yeah. So as as Mateo was pointing out, we need to put issues under under some of these milestones that are there, I, or or get rid of the milestones altogether if we if we don't want to do them. Um, so I'll be working on that as well um, in the next uh, days. So. Um, does anybody else want to make any last comments uh, for this meeting? I will be aiming at two weeks from now to have uh, the next uh, the next session. So check the calendar for that. The, 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 only, the only thing I, I would maybe point out uh, along the lines of what we were saying with the milestones with no issues, let's make sure that uh, we have a clear defined scope for the release. That we know what we upfront, what we are going to try to deliver. That we don't overcommit. We put dates, and uh, we're gonna try to put down what we want to do. And it would be nice to do this upfront as opposed to kind of adjust it as we go along. And it's not that easy, but we should at least try to keep going our learning curve. Yeah. Let's you and I. Let's you and I spend some time on that, Matteo, um, in the next week if we can. Okay. Okay. All right, great. Well, happy 2013, everybody. Um, looking forward to this year. I'm excited about where, where we're going to go. Um, I will see you all in two weeks. Sergey, I will see you in 20 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. All right, everybody. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.